and welcome back to Let's Play Earthbound. Uh, last time we rescued Paula at Happy Happy Village and then returned to Tucson and off screen I actually did some things. I actually got Paula up to level 11 and I also equipped her with uh, some stuff that we could buy at Tucson. All these other items, uh, the luck capsule was from the one present and everything else like the cookie and the ketchup packets were from uh, just random encounters basically, trying to level up a little bit. So this is Lilliput Steps, I think. Or maybe the actual place with the Your Sanctuary is Lilliput Steps, and this is technically a sub-area of, uh, whatever this place is called, Happy Happy, happy, happy Village. But in other words, um... We're just kinda gonna use Auto Battle for a lot of this, to be honest. Just gonna try to, um... Survive, mainly. Uh, keep as much HP as possible as we make our way through this little treacherous cavern. So, okay, I turned around just in the nick of time. That could have been really bad, actually. Uh, if I had not. Yes, it sounds weird, but if you don't turn around fast enough, you can get a back tack, and that's really ugly. So, luckily that didn't happen. Now, my memories of this area are a little bit fuzzy, so this is going to be fun. Fun fact, this is actually a second attempt at recording, so when I say my memory is fuzzy, that's actually really bad, because I just did this. <laughs> yeah, sometimes enemies outspeed you, which is a problem. Um, it's also a problem if you can't get even close to the boss that's giving trouble. <laughs> Uh, but I actually have a better strategy this time, so it should go better, hopefully. Uh, no promises. Again, I'm incredibly rusty at Earthbound. Uh, he's trapped, so I don't have to worry about him too much. Uh, you know what? I have a lot of useless items. Let's have probably the cookie. Sure. Why not? Tentea's very good. I would never any items, or just certain items, like, can get bad, or go bad, effectively. I actually don't know that, fun fact. If uh, items spoil, effectively. Just missed. Yeah, sometimes it's not worth it to try to avoid enemies, so it's faster to just try to directly engage them. Was that Nesra Paula who did 56 damage just now? I didn't actually catch it. Oh, the level ups. 18. That's a good level up for HP. I know I can deal with one mole, but I just want to <laughs> save a little bit of time. I don't need the experience either, so it's just kind of a, a waste. I'm actually like at a good level, I just didn't have the strategy down. I was using the wrong type of attack, basically. And that messed me up, and I ran out of psychic points, and died, terrifically. Might as well show off all the enemies in this area, huh? The Mighty Bear. So, freeze. Fun fact, off screen, I, I, on my fa failed attempt, I actually discovered something I never knew about. You can actually see descriptions that give estimated damage uh, in the status menu. I never knew that. And it's actually super helpful. Hey, butterfly. So there's a butterfly here. So I'm going to uh, put everyone at max HP. I think this is at max, actually. Uh, but just in case. It only costs 5 PP, so might as well. That episode is 20, so we should be in good shape. Uh, I don't know if I have enough room to off-screen this. Yeah, I don't think so. Okay, we're finding them. I probably could squeak by, but then he would have turned around and started attacking, so it's just better to do it this way. Yeah, Freeze is really helpful for getting through this area. Why did Ness lose motivation? Uh, sometimes weird things happen if you haven't called home, but I actually called home right before starting this, so I'm not sure why Ness would lose motivation already and feel homesick, considering I literally just called home before saving. So it's like, that's weird. I 
don't know what caused that. Paula is really helpful through this area just because her magic helps, or her PSI helps so much. While we're the teddy bear, uh, I kind of was hoping to keep the teddy bear around, but uh, no. I actually lost a second teddy bear just trying to get to uh, Happy Happy Village again. This area does not mess around. It's pretty intimidating. Um, I do feel like Happy Happy Village and this whole section is where the game really starts to get real. Uh, and actually start to be pretty difficult if you don't plan well. And I have not planned well, <laughs> clearly. Um, I'm trying to conserve psychic points as much as I can through this area. Uh, that that sucked. Uh, I'm not being able to defeat him because of damage rolls. I can do enough damage, I just didn't do enough damage in this instance, but I got level up. Uh, not the best level up, but life of beta, that's appreciated. Okay, so caramel, that is a good item. Oh, this is a fun place to be in. I don't really have time to, like, plan, so I'm just gonna... Uh, I'm gonna use the hand aid, actually. How much does this heal? Max out, okay. You finally got here. This is the second your sanctuary location, but it's mine now. Take it from me if you dare. It says Mondo Mall. Uh, apparently the strategy is to use paralysis. I've never done this, so let's give it a shot. What could possibly go wrong with this? Let's use fire. I found that fire axe is actually pretty good on this boss. Just like 30 damage ish. 20 to 30. His body became numb, which is good. That means we can just kind of bash away at him. I think. Uh, I actually don't know what this does, to be honest. I don't know what paralysis actually accomplishes. Um. So yeah, I should probably look at the descriptions of these things, instead of just rolling with it. Um, but hey, if he's not doing a whole lot, then I'm fine with that. Yuck. Okay, he has healing spells. Okay, so it's like Pokemon, where he'll occasionally knock an attack off. Uh, so that's good. I wonder if the way this works is he can only use, like, special attacks. Using Pokemon terms. Like he can't use physical. Cause that's what it feels like. He's only using PSI. And every other time he's it says his, his body is numb, so maybe he can only use uh special attacks. Yeah, I need to call home. Uh when I get back into town. Which shouldn't take too long, because well quite frankly, Happy Happy Village is right here. Outside. So yeah, when you paralyze him, he can't really do a whole lot against you, other than waste PP. And by the way, bosses have PP limits, so uh, yeah, that's really good to keep in mind. Level 13, uh, and 14. Holding up. I'm legit holding up to get through this. Yes, briefly had a vision of a baby in a red cap. As the soundstone recorded the melody of the Lilliput steps. Now, Lilliput, of course, is a reference to Gulliver's Travels, which is a book I haven't read about. Oh man, it's been about five or six years. It was high school. It was a good book. I enjoyed it. It wasn't one of my favorites, but I had a good time reading it. What's worth. I'm not super into that kind of fantasy for some reason. As much as I like fantasy, I couldn't get into like Gulliver's Travels and the like. It's a little bit odd. I was trying to avoid the enemies, but then I realized we actually dealt with the uh, whatchamacallit, so uh, they generally shouldn't be as aggressive. I think some of the bears will still go after you because they're bears. Uh, but on the whole, I think enemies do kind of chill out once you defeat the uh, big boss. See, I like before, I don't really feel the need to get anything. 
uh, on my first run through because it's a lot easier to go back and get items uh, on your second run through. Croissant. Yeah, but I don't. I legitimately have no idea why Ness is lo losing motivation like this because uh, he shouldn't. Because I just called home. And yes, this is a mechanic I should have mentioned earlier. You do need to call home occasionally or you will get into trouble. You can also get flavor text by Ness feeling homesick, which is really bad because that cuts off his turn. So I'm just gonna demonstrate. Oh, Ness, so I heard that you got a new girlfriend on your journey. Well, why don't you tell me about her later? You see, I have this feeling that she might be right next to you or something. Well, if she is right there, say hello to her for me. I have to go, I have to go now. I'm right in the middle of cleaning the toilet. Bye. I love how games always joke about that. Because, like, I know Phoenix Wright constantly makes jokes about, like, cleaning the bathrooms. That's just, like, the most un undesirable thing to do in the world, basically. Because it kind of is one of the less desired tasks in life. So I am actually not going to show the whole route back. Uh, because it's not necessary. I'm gonna just show a partial route. Unless I die. Which could happen. Well that sucks. But healing and... Uh, freeze. Alpha, because beta is actually overkill on this enemy. Yeah, Ness didn't even have a chance to heal her. Uh, which happens. It's a little bit unfortunate when that happens. Uh, considering I just played Vesperia, I guess that makes sense that I would feel that way. By the way, I'm actually thinking about playing some more Vesperia after Sonic Adventure. Uh, I've been legitimately contemplating the possibility of going back and getting all the fell arms, uh, and that's about it, because uh, the bonus dungeon sounds really bad in terms of difficulty, and also the super boss is not easy. But the reason I'm actually showing this much is, in case you're wondering, I wanted to show getting the hard hat. So the hard hat, I think, is a good item. Who actually equips the hard hat? Uh... Hmm. Oh, maybe it has to be in his actual inventory. Okay, that's actually a drop in defense. Well then. Uh, so... Go in here. This is one of my least favorite parts of Earthbound, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, having to do menu management. Um... Go in here. I think the luck capsule's best for a party member we don't have yet, so... Uh, I might be wrong though, I might be thinking of the wrong character. So, hey, yay, we got a hard hat now. And now I'm going to make the long journey back to Tucson. So, see you there. So, we are now outside the cast theater in Tucson. And you may be thinking, wait a minute, didn't you forget a really good item? at a uh, little bit steps? The answer is yes, but I'm actually gonna go back for that later. It turns out it's actually really easy to go back and get things. Hey, you come with, came with Paula. Then you deserve a present, playboy. Here's a backstage pass. You can get into our shows with this. That's got the backstage pass. Yeah, you're with a girl today. You must be pretty popular. How about introducing her to my bandmate? He's right here. I already did. The one Runaway 5 tour bus. Now, do I use this or do I just talk to her? Hello, please present your ticket. Okay, so we actually have to use the item. Here you go. Hurry, you're just in time to see the Runway 5 show. Uh, FYI, if you want to go get a drink or something, that would be a good time. Because I'm pretty sure there's a long cutscene coming up. Very soon. Changing my clothes now, don't come in. I'm trying to remember how you actually triggered the performance, though. Uh, also, I don't think you can get arrested like in Earthbound <laughs> Beginnings. Um, the, one, the Runway 5 are going to be a world-famous band someday. Hopefully so. That'd be cool. 
Do you like baseball? I knew it. Your cap gave it away. A young fan like you really gets into the Runaway 5's music. Wow, I'm, I'm impressed. Lucky of the Runaway 5 told me I could go backstage if I don't have a pass. I'm sure security will stop me. Hey, really? You have a pass? I can't believe it. Can you take me with you? Please, please, please. I could pose as your sister. Yes, this rocks. Let's go. Ooh, my heart is pounding. Okay, here's the necessary event. Hey, you get to see our show, you lucky kid. Hope you pay attention. I want some bread. Need the coinage. I want more dough all the time. Can I give you the money? <laughs> uh, because we kind of have a lot of money. That's exactly what I want. I can't believe that you have that much. Oh, okay. What the looks to most of the Runaway 5 songs. Money, that's what I want. Money, that's what is hot. Money, that's what I want. Money, it's what we ain't got. So freedom. Freedom, freedom is what we've really sought? Okay. Interesting rhyme. Uh... Wow, $10,000. I can make another song now. Ten cheese, ten cheese, that's dollars, baby dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Creative. Shabadiwap. I cannot read this very well. I got those debt blues. Mm. If I had $10,000, I could pay off my debts and move on to the next town. I wonder if our bus still runs and maybe rust it out. Who do I give this to? I'll try to use your play money here, kid. Oh my gosh, that's not real money, is it? Wow. Oh yeah, in the old days, there was lots of dancers and acts at the state, except now we're the only act playing here. We've even gone to debt here, so we're pretty near stuck. The folks of Tucson will enjoy the Runway 5 show for quite a few years. Looks like to me... Yeah, that's right. Tonight, you got the Chaos Leader Soul Man coming at ya. Rock and roll live on this here stage for a limited time only. The world's greatest bluesman, the Runway 5. And here they come. Oh yeah. Well, that was time consuming. <laughs> okay, so that is the Runway 5's performance. I don't quite know what we're supposed to do now. Because I tried giving them the money and they wouldn't take it. Come in quick, don't be shy. I'm so excited, I might just wet myself. My heart is going pitter patter. Now, who did who I give the money for? Uh, Mr. Pritchifud, the man of the is looking for you. I wonder what he wants. Okay, well that answers my question. I read that these are a reference to the Blues Brothers. I don't know why they're the Runaway Five. Apparently there's one scene in particular where there's six of them. I don't know if it was this scene, because I was actually checking Discord. Not gonna lie. Uh, the reason, because that just kind of drags a little bit. Runway Five owe me a lot of money. They'll stay here until they pay me back. You might be here for a hundred years unless you decide to pay off your debt. <laughs> Okay, we can do that. Excuse me, what's that you got there? Let me take a real close look. Oh, maybe I have to talk to him behind the counter. Uh... Nope, okie dokie then. Just take my money. Yipes! You surprised me, now I'm not sure what to do. I got the money of course, and now the runner with five are free to leave. I've got no complaints now that I have the money. Well, what do you know? This little nipper took us from a nightmare to a dream. Ow. This means we can get out of this dump. 
rocket driver, come on, I'll show ya. Alright, let's move on to the next town. I'm sure our old hunk of chunk will get us there. I didn't make a spectacle of myself, did I? So, if you couldn't tell, we have special music now. This is significant, we have to get on the bus. But, we don't want to get on the bus. Uh, this is weird. But, uh, I have my speculation on why this is, I'll go into this right now. Um, apparently, I've read that this is actually a good time to go fight Mondo Mole. <laughs> yes, right now. Because there's a weird exploit slash bug. How many teddy bears do we have? One? I almost want to go buy a second one, actually. Next area is a little bit tough. But for some reason... Well, basically when this music is playing, telling you, oh, get on the bus. Uh, the game kind of freaks out a little bit. It kind of, like, despawns everything, so... Uh, that's really weird. I don't know why the game does this, but it does, from what I've read. At least on the SNES, I don't know if that's the case on the Wii U, but my guess is it's just kind of a technical problem. Because of RAM. Maybe for some reason it has to load something else, aka the root to the read, that it has to basically despawn every other enemy. But I guess it doesn't actually despawn Mondo Mole, so if you actually want to fight Mondo Mole, uh, with little resistance getting to him, you can actually just take the, uh, the opportunity here to go fight him, if you so desire. Not gonna lie, I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm getting lost. But yeah, there's no enemies around. I just, well, wanted to shut this off, but I also, again, need to legitimately go and get an item. So this ended up working out pretty well. On the way over to Happy Happy Village, I guess one thing I can talk about is the fact that well, there's a present we never got, let's go get that. When, while there are no enemies on the field, that would be a good time to do so. It's, it's kind of surreal in a game if you get rid of every enemy. Like, it is actually kind of odd. Even though it's easy to navigate, it's just kind of creepy almost, not having anything in the way. A couple life noodles. This was definitely worth it because that is your uh, revive, that is your phoenix down, if you will. I don't know how much it heals. Uh, a couple of a couple life noodles. Uh, do not use. Revives a friend who is unconscious. In addition, it also works while in poison, nausea, cold, sunstroke, falling asleep, uncontrollable crying, and feeling strange. This is effective when you have paralysis or you have been diamond diamondized. So it's basically a free heal, in addition to being a re resurrect. Which means it's pretty powerful. Pretty powerful. Uh, but, uh, for now, again, I'm just gonna try to figure out where this item is that we're looking for. It's weird how the game still lags, just from NPCs, even though there are still no enemies around. Yeah, I kinda wish I'd known this, so this whole trip would be a lot shorter. I don't remember coming down here at all. There's a great charm inside. This is actually recommended for Paula, conveniently, because she already is here. Um, okay, we have to actually just go through the menu because the, the uh, charm actually boosts defense a little bit. Um, let us read this. Cow charm must be equipped on your body. It, that is the wrong one. Uh, that just basically is, is a status thing. It doesn't do anything besides protect you. Must be equipped on your body, protects you from paralysis, also adds a bit of speed as well, so boosts her defense by one and her speed by a certain amount. Um, and being a caster of sorts, and also way under leveled, comparably. Okay, she already outspeeds Ness, never mind. I was gonna comment on that, but she already outspeeds them, so never mind. Actually, there's probably more stuff up here. 
Yes, I know we were gonna leave this place, but uh, hey, here we are again. This game does have some really creepy sound effects, actually. Uh, normally, I don't really think about music in games, which is really weird. Uh, normally, I don't even play with like headphones or whatever, so I don't hear the music too often. So when I do hear the music, it's like, okay, that sounds really creepy. I think there might be something up here. I don't think we actually... No, we did check up here. Okay, so we got everything. The Great Charm is, again, highly recommended, though, because it does boost speed and uh, defense. So Paula especially can use the defense, not so much the speed. You wish you could kind of give the speed to Ness instead, but hey, you can't win them all. Also, remember how I said you could probably make, like, go get a drink or something? Uh, we're having another cutscene like that, uh, so we're actually probably better off ending off the video soon. Uh, I don't know if I need to show this route back, if I have anything topical. I suppose one thing that's topical is that they actually did uh, change one small detail about the uh, happy happiest cult. They originally, I think, had like, they had like letters on their hoods. So they actually, well, yeah, it's supposed to make you think of a certain organization that they didn't really want to directly reference as much, and they have the little Santa, like, ball thing on the end of their hoods, which was also absent, so... Yeah, obviously they're referencing something there. Something that would not be so suitable for kids in America. This game was actually rated kids to adults. Uh, K to A, K A, I don't know how you actually say that rating. It was phased out years ago in favor of the E rating, uh, and th yet this game didn't even get the E rating on reappraisal. And that is a, a good point, that a lot of games have been re-rated. Uh, some wonder how much the re-rating affected this game's release in the first place, because it actually was rated for Wii uh, for the Virtual Console, but was never released, and then um, it finally came out for the Wii U rated T, so it's like, it's a little bit weird. Uh, this game is kind of an enigma, actually. Also, by the way, I think the Runaway 5 do perform once more, so get used to sitting around a lot whenever they start performing. But I find it kind of fascinating how they kind of split up aspects of Earthbound all over the place. You know, again, some consider Frank to be kind of analogous to Teddy, uh, except, you know, like, the, I think you find him at like a club in that game, but obviously the club is a much different place in this particular entry. And with that, we are back to Tucson. So, uh, we got groovy music again. So next time, we'll head out to 3 along the Runaway 5. Thank you for watching, and I hope you join me next time for more Earthbound.